get ready to match the stars. Scoey Mitchell, Brett Summer, Gary Murgoff, Karen Morrow, Richard Dawson, and Fanny Flagg as we play the star-studded Big Money Match Game 75. And now here's the star of Match Game 75, Gene Rayner. <laughs> Couldn't have done it better myself. Beat it, you hamburger. <laughs> I don't Who's have anything. <laughs> Who's your friend? His brother. This is, this is my friend, uh, Radar Jr. here. Oh, oh, that's right. That's the one from the match. given to me by our friends, the An Andersons from Benton Harbor, Michigan, for the baby. Yeah. Isn't that cute? Oh, how nice. Yeah, that's it. You know, one thing I found out when you're going to relate stories. Yes? You should always stop and think, you know, does anybody really care about this? <laughs> Why you have to think that? You're so sweet, Scoey. <laughs> you really are. He's so showbiz. Yeah. <laughs> what did he say? The Anderson gave him that for the baby? Yes. <laughs> I got a toaster for my baby, of course. <laughs> you can get good deals if you just hang on. That's right. <laughs> Let's say hello to our two players here, Audrey Nebenzahl and Glenda Burke. Dingbats. <laughs> 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 They're dingbats. How are you? Fine, How much money you. have you won? Fifty-six hundred dollars. Fifty-six hundred. Mm -hmm. Now you're a rich lady. You don't need that money. What are you going to do with it? That's not true. Oh, you're not a rich lady. Oh, you're a poor lady. What are you going to do with that money? Uh, put some of it in the bank and. She is a rich lady. She lied. And go home and visit everybody for a you're while. You're going to visit your family. Yeah. Well, that'll be nice. Now, Glenda. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, we got a tie score here, haven't we? All right. Well, uh -oh. <laughs> we're going to have to go to a tiebreaker. That's what we do when we have a tie, and you'll see how that works out right after you see how this works out. Yes. All right. Here we go. Now, uh, first we got to wipe the suede uh, sway clean. <laughs> there it is. It did it anyway. So I push this button. One question for each of you. The one who matches the most celebrities will be the winner. Glenda, do you want A or B? I think I'll try B one more time, please. B, one more time. Here we go. Everybody plays. This is a tiebreaker. Okay. Mildred was shocked when she went into the ladies' room and found a blank. What? <laughs> that's it. I say what? Mildred was shocked when she went into the ladies' room and found a blank. Boy, that's a short one. That is. Oh, I shouldn't say that word. It makes me very insecure. <laughs> <laughs> He's still back with Arthur. Hmm. Gosh, when she went into the ladies' room and found out. How shocked was she? <laughs> Mildred was shocked when she went into the ladies' room and found a blank. Honey, you're, I got it! You think I'm some kind of dummy? <laughs> Don't answer that question. <laughs> she copied it from me. <laughs> All right, everybody ready over there? Yep, ready. Glenda. Mildred was shocked. When she went into the ladies' room and found a... Man. A man. That's a very logical... That logic is irrefutable, Scoey. Irrefutable. Watch me refute it. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna no, watch I, it. I didn't go for any brevity or, I mean, or any, any uh, laughing or anything. Levity. 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 I, didn't go for, I didn't go for any brevity. <laughs> Uh, because there's a lot at stake. So I played it straight and I said, man. All right. That's one for Glenda. Did you go for any brevity or levity or anything like that? In, I'm go, I didn't go for levity, but I will now go for brevity. Fella. Fella. <laughs> there's another man. Do you go for that fella? I, now that's a leading <laughs> question, sir. <laughs> oh, dare you. <laughs> Before I've had my coffee. <laughs> Can't answer those questions. I said fella too. Fella. That's two fellas. Same there. to you, fella. Mildred was shocked when she went into the ladies' room and found a man, as Glenda Burke says. What do you say? Karen Morrow says found a man. A man. Mm -hmm. That's four men. <coughs> Another man. What was this darling's name? Glenda Burke. Oh, Mildred. 
was shocked uh, when yeah. she went in the ladies' room and found a man. Because when I go in there, I always say, don't be shocked. <laughs> <laughs> man, oh, that's five. That's it, man. <coughs> Fanny, are you going to be the only rotten apple in the barrel? I beg your pardon. Mildred was shocked <coughs> when she went into the ladies' room and found she didn't <coughs> have changed for a quarter. Uh, no. <laughs> Six for you. Now, now here's Audrey's tie-breaking question. Listen carefully, oh Audrey. Boy. When Tarzan and Jane got married, they had an unusual ceremony. Tarzan didn't slip his ring around Jane's finger. He slipped his blank around Jane's neck. <laughs> That a boy, Rich. You got it. All right. Bing, bing, bing. Bing, bing. <laughs> you can't say bing, bing, bing on NBC. There we go. On yes, CBS. Yes. Okay. Audrey. Does that Everybody mean I'm ready? finished in show business? When Tarzan and Jane got married, they had an unusual ceremony. Tarzan didn't slip his ring around Jane's finger. He slipped his blank around Jane's neck. Loincloth. Loincloth. Got to match everybody to stay in the game. We're looking for a loincloth. <laughs> what you got, Scully? Oh. Mm. <laughs> Go ahead, Scully. But that ain't it, huh? <laughs> I said vine. Vine was good, but that's not a winner. What are the rest of you got? Okay. Now you stand by for a moment or so. We've got to say goodbye to Audrey. It was a pleasure meeting you. Thank you. You're very it's charming. Wonderful to be here. Oh, I'm Thank so you. glad you had a good time, Audrey, and that you won five thousand six hundred dollars. Watch this spinning off. We'll spin this commercial for you, and then you hurry right back. See how we make out here. You ready? <laughs> yes, of course. Oh, you should have been here. Oh. <laughs> and I'll never be able to explain to it. Are you ready? think so. Okay. Glenda wants to hold on to me uh, because she's feeling a little insecure at this moment, but she's going to do okay. Glenda, we polled a recent studio audience and we got their best response to this. Blank Derby. Now, the answer that audience gave most often is worth $500 if you match it. If you match the next one, you get $250 and the third $100. Three are permitted to help. Whom do you choose? Fanny. Kentucky Derby! Kentucky Derby! Richard, please. Richard, what do you say? Hello? Mitch Miller? No, I'm sorry. Um, ah, Brown Derby. Uh, Brown Derby. Thank you, Mitch. Brown Derby. Bet, how about number three, which is Soapbox Derby? Yeah! Soapbox yeah! Derby, Brown Derby, and Kentucky Derby. Yeah. That's the best. It's now, don't pull that. Hateful. Leave them alone. Gee! Do you want one of those? I think I'm... From the south, I think I'll take Kentucky Derby. Kentucky Derby. That's the one that. Well, oh, Fanny gave that one, didn't you? All right, we're looking for a Kentucky Derby. Let's find out if it's up there, and if so, where? May we see the $100 response? Roller Derby. All right, you still got a chance here for the Kentucky Derby. Here is a $250 response. Brown. Brown Derby. Oh, Gee, I Richard Gibbs. Brown Derby. Going to be. Last Good. chance for the Kentucky Derby. Here is the $500 response. Ha! Yeah. Six hundred dollars now. Now that means you're going to play for ten times five hundred or five thousand. In order to collect, though, you've got to match one of them head to head exactly. Who will that be? Richard. Okay, Richard. <laughs> she was so lucky for How you. quickly they forget, yes. Fanny. Sorry, right, you face me. <laughs> we lucked out once. We'll cut you loose now. <laughs> Here we go. $5,000 question. Blank Nights. N I G H T S. Blank Nights. 
or blank nights. N I G H T S. N I G H T S, yes. Okay, he's finished. Now, Glenda, we need your answer. One you think will match his. Blank nights. A thousand and one. A thousand and one nights. All right. Richard, that's what she says will match you. May we see it for $5,000, please? I think it's the same set of uh, short stories. The Arabian Nights. The Arabian Nights. Yeah. Is that going to be a match? It is a match. I really think that we should give a round of applause because the judge, it is the Arabian Thousand and One Nights, and they. It was a difficult decision. Well, thank but you very much. They listen. said it was the same thing, so they had to match it. Let's oh, applaud the producer yeah. again. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Put a little makeup on Ira if you're going to get on camera like that. <laughs> now, you've got your $5,600, and what'd you say to me? I said, well, maybe my husband will take me to dinner. You bet he will. And you know who's going to pay. <laughs> you're going to pay. Okay, now let's meet your next challenger here. Let's welcome Don Sims. Glenda, don't you? All right, Don. You look pretty sharp there. We welcome you, sir. Thank you. And we ask you to tell us a little bit about yourself. <laughs> yes, Gene. I'm a motorcycle officer with the uh, Los Angeles Police Department. Oh, yes, sir. <laughs> I'm married. I have uh, a lovely wife sitting in the audience. I have uh, two children. Some of my hobbies include weightlifting and... Uh, I'm currently in the process of rebuilding an old cabin cruiser. Really? Yes. You do woodworking, I guess. Yes, huh? I do. Yeah, well, that's a very good skill. How old are your kids? I have one uh, five and a little boy. He's almost three now. And what are their names? Keisha and Don Jr. Okay, welcome to uh, Match Game 75, Don. The very best of luck to you, and shall we begin? Thank you. I push this button, which is here somewhere, <laughs> and there it is, and ask you to make a selection. A, please. A it is, we go, we're off and away, and here I, we go. I'm not gonna make any mistakes with him. <laughs> now listen, no. I want to say something to you now. You may not know this, but Scoy Mitchell spells his name M-I-T-C-H-L-L-L. -L -L. I knew that. Three L's. One L stands for likable, one L stands for lucky, and the third L stands for blank. <laughs> you know, Scoey. Could you repeat that one more time? Sure. One L stands for likable. Scoey Mitchell spells his name, Mitchell, M-I-T-C-H-L-L-L. -L -L. Three L's. One L stands for likable, one L stands for lucky, and the third L stands for blank. Think about that while they're thinking about one up here. Think of a good one, because you, you could write a whole new nightclub act around this thing. Did you know that Karen Morrow just finished at the Studio One and she was wonderful? Thank yes. you. Yes. Great. Thank you. Do you know how much you bar? So <laughs> I wonder if you deliver the Arabian card. Oh, yes. You are charming. I'll be glad to do that. My number's there. The service will pick up here. <laughs> Anytime. There's the one that won you the 5,000. Oh, Richard. Scully, we're waiting for you. This question revolves around you. You were there. You ought to know how this goes. You have a fertile, imaginative, creative, comedic mind. Write something on the card and don't be so. Don't say right. revolve. He gets seasick. Oh, all right. All right, Don Sim. Scoey Mitchell spells his name M-I-T-C-H-L-L-L, -L -L, three L's. One L stands for likable. One L stands for lucky. And the third L stands for... Lazy. Lazy. Now, that's a character you have portrayed from time to time, isn't it? 
Hello there, Scoey. Don't get surly with me. <laughs> I didn't write the question. I just, I, I just hope that if you ever have to stop me. Yeah. <laughs> Motorcycle wheel comes off. <laughs> I couldn't think of anything really that began really? with an L, and I didn't try to be funny or anything. I, I just wrote lousy, you know. Lousy. That's funny. Likeable, lucky, and lousy. There. Okay, what do you say, Brett? I say that Dickie Dawson left some lipstick on Fanny's cheek when he kissed her. Oh. And it would be nice if she was. I'm like just it wearing off. lip gloss. I don't have. <laughs> Are you all right? Yes. Okay. Now. Well, really? I said likable. What was it, dear? Likable? One stands for likable, one for lucky, and the third L stands for? Lovely. Lovely. Mm. Yeah. To look at, delightful. <laughs> anything oh. for a song. And That's right. <laughs> That's enough. Okay. She'll say anything for a song. I wouldn't I sing think... when Karen Morrow's sitting here. She's one of the world's greatest singers. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to sing? You've got... Why not? Well, I know. Look, come on now. Well, then. Enough of that. Scary. Scary may not remember, but we used to live very close to each other. We both shopped at Swab's Drugstore. And yeah. I happened to have observed him on many occasions. And believe me, it is definitely Lover. Lover. Okay. Oh, John you. Sims said lazy, based, I guess, on the character that Co uh, Scoey has portrayed on television. What do you say? Well, I'm not going to spoil a perfect record here. This is how I know him, Loony. He's a loony. <laughs> loony bird. Okay. I'd like Richard. to answer this very quickly. I'm be, be, double be, parked, officer. Be, yes. <laughs> uh, be kind. I agree. Yes, I said exactly as you did. Be kind. Lousy at playing the match game. <laughs> Lousy at playing the match game. What a wonderful human being. <laughs> and Fanny. Well, all of us that know Scoey, he's lovable. Uh, lovable. A yes. model. Listen, I think you had a good idea, Don, because he has played that character of a lazy... Not at all. <laughs> No. no. Lethargic? No. That was no. Frank Sinatra. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I'm not lazy. No, but I mean, haven't you put. <laughs> All right, folks. All right, your first round question will come along a little bit later. Right now, we've got a uh, uh, little business, and this is it. Come back. Today's consolation prizes are Hanford Ford Stainless from Washington Forge. Complete service for 12, carefree stainless in a walnut chest, beautiful Hanford Ford Stainless. And new Olympic overcoats, the first of Syria coatings specifically formulated for redo over old paint. Don't repaint, put on the overcoat. And a supply of Tic Tacs. Put a Tic Tac in your mouth and get a bang out of life in the clean, fresh explosion of mint. Here a blank, there a blank, everywhere a blank blank. When match game 75 continues in a minute. We are ready to go on with the second half of round one. Glenda, this is yours. The nurse said, I think that new surgeon used to be a bartender. In the operating room, he pulled out a lady's blank with a corkscrew. <laughs> That's what he said. The nurse said that. She said, I think that new surgeon used to be a bartender. In the operating room, he pulled out a lady's blank with a corkscrew. <laughs> Now, I'm trying to think what would be the most logical thing. There isn't thing. one. Well, the first round questions, you How know, they're a little cork? wild. I got it. Okay. <laughs> All right. Is everybody <laughs> happy? No, but we're so Linda, happy. No, the nurse said, I think that new surgeon used to be a bartender in the operating room. He pulled out a lady's blank with a corkscrew. Bladder. <laughs> <laughs> she said bladder I heard her you did uh, I said tonsils tonsils <laughs> open wide uh -oh. yeah, he said say ah uh, yeah that's good a, that's yeah, right and tonsil does look a little bit like a cork that's yeah. right okay Brett <clears throat> That's what make him so mean. <laughs> Tonsils, I'm Tonsils, sorry. Tonsils, yeah. That's not a bad answer, now that I think about it. Gary, what'd you we say? Are climbing Jacob's bladder. No, Come on. Oh, I said appendix. Appendix. Oh, another good one. I suppose it could be anything internal. Bladder was just <laughs> as good as tonsils or vice versa. What are you offering? What part I'm, of the anatomy? I've known uh, Gary a long time. So appendix. That's it. Too long. No, so you got four tonsils well. and two appendix. 
appendices. Do I hear three appendices? Five, five appendices. I'm sorry. I thought... Yeah, that's the seven appendices. Well, one thing about it, if she didn't get any of them right, she couldn't fall behind. That's right. <laughs> zero to zero, as you can plainly see. All right, round two coming up after this message. I thought we were going to have time to carry on here, but we don't have time to carry on. We've got to stop at this point at the end of round one, zero to zero tie, and we'll uh, go to round two the next time we meet, all right? Thank you. Look forward to seeing you then, and we shall look forward to seeing all of you lovely, gifted, talented people. You were just splendid through this whole miserable mess. You can put the answers <laughs> away now. Wasn't Scoey wonderful? Scoey was yeah. wonderful, and I don't care <laughs> what they say to you, you are coming back, but not soon. <laughs> This show. <laughs> this show. Uh, what is that? I just want everybody to know that Charles is coming oh, back. Oh, yeah, that Charles will be coming back one of these days. But terrific? you'll be back, too. Thank you. And we will. And next time when we get together, we're going to have these bodies for your pleasure. Gary Berghoff. <laughs> Brett Summers. Charles Nelson Riley. Madeline Rue. Richard Dawson. And Betty White. Team Raider Match Game 75. Join us next time. Goodbye. This is Johnny Olson speaking for Match Game 75. A Mark Goodson, Bill Todman production. Stay tuned for Tattle Tales next over most of the CBS stations.